You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KCCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and a welcome, a welcome, a welcome to Jake from Sports Talk here on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. If you're coming to us from around the globe and listening online, hola, namaste, bonjour. I can be cultured, Austin. It's 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 amazing to see and, and to think about, but I can be cultured. You forgot konnichiwa. Oh, kon- konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. I, I forgot a lot of them. There's a lot of languages out there. But yes, that, that wonderful voice you're hearing today. We've got Austin Engineering on the board today, not Dick as usual. So that means, thankfully, no soccer talk. But, what do you mean as usual? I've engineered like your past four shows. Well, no, Dick's been here the last two weeks. At, oh, well, I guess you have engineered because Dick's been sitting across from me. That's right. So <laughs> there we go. But we've got Austin on the board. Maybe we'll throw a little movie talk in, in today. So who, who knows? What's your favorite sports movie, Austin? My favorite sports movie? Are you a sports movie guy? Are you a Rocky fan? I am a Rocky fan, but I, that's more of a drama than like a straight that's up a love sports story. movie. That's a love story. Exactly. You don't have a favorite sports movie? I don't watch too many. I, I mean, I'm sure I've seen a ton. Like, I know I really like The Greatest Game Ever Played. Yeah, that's really good. That's good. Have you ever seen Ten Cup? That's one of my favorites. Have you ever seen, a, I think it's called Goon? It's yeah, a Goon. I love Goon. Probably uh, the it's the number one most underrated movie in sports movies, and then it's probably one of the it's probably one or two top hockey movies of all time. So right. that's right. I love Goon. I, I I'll go Goon all day. So <laughs> that's a good that's a good Saturday afternoon. Nothing going on. Nothing to watch. So, but yes, welcome. You are listening to Jake from Sports Talk here on Lone Star Community Radio. I am your host, Jake Lafleur. Glad to have you guys back in. And if you're new to the show, welcome. Welcome to the circus that I call a sports talk show. Glad to have you guys in here. Don't forget, you can get involved in the show. You can be as active as you want. And you can come and yell at me or you can tell me how much you love me. I like the love me part better. But, you know, I like the uh, I like the arguments just as much. So follow the Facebook, follow the YouTube. Both are at Jake from Sports Talk or email me, Jake from Sports Talk at gmail.com send me a message let me know what you think uh if you want to text me feel free to text away my phone number is 832-752-1313 get involved as much as you can let me know what you think we're gonna actually dabble in a little bit of uh of politics in this week's show which is kind of shocking oh no i know well it was a it was a big political weekend unfortunately we had an unfortunate event happen this past weekend and uh as much as I like to keep it sports centric, because I'm, you know, I'm not the most well informed when it you comes to politics. You know what happened the last time you brought up politics with Colin Kaepernick? Well, yeah, I got yelled at, and he, he obviously politics and Colin Kaepernick are going hand in hand, and it'll be hand in hand in this week's show as well. But we're gonna get into that later as we start every week out. Let's find out what has gone on in the world of sports in the last week. Here's a week and a wrap. The final GBA major, or PGA, GPA, that's college coming out of you right there. We were talking about college. Austin is starting his freshman year at Sam Houston. Eat him up, cats. Eat him up. Yep, and we, uh, we're, I've got college on my mind now. The final PGA major of the year took place this past weekend, and it did not disappoint. As always, the PGA major, uh, the PGA championship always seems to come through with, you know, that, that Sunday that is down to the wire. Uh, Kevin Kisner held the lead for the majority of the tournament, uh, but saw it slip through his grip on Sunday when it when he dropped two shots and allowed his chasers like Hideki Matsu, uh, Matsuyama, I always butcher his last name, Patrick Reed, which is a local Woodlands boy. His uh, home course is the uh, Woodlands Country Club. Shout out to them. Louis Oosthuizen, Patrick Reed, Ricky Fowler, they all caught up, caught up to him and surpassed him, but the ultimate winner was Justin Thomas. He walked away with a... I don't know, it's kind of odd to say, but a dominant three under 68 on Sunday at Quail Hollow to pull out his first major championship of the year. And it's I say it's odd to hear a dominant three under because when you hear dominant in golf, you're thinking, go, oh, somebody shot a 64 or you know, or lower. But in this in this case that Quail Hollow played played challenging and they played tough all weekend. 
long, and and you saw Kisner. Kisner never, you know, played superbly well. He never, I don't know. He played he played great. He just didn't hold in, hold on on Sunday. But you didn't see the the Tiger Wood dominance out of anybody really this this weekend at this tournament. But it was Quail Hollow played a very hard course there, uh, and and poor Kisner. I mean, I, I'm not gonna. I, I'm not going to be too all boohoo. This man knows how to lose, which makes him a great winner. Um, he's come from lesser tours than the PGA, including uh, Web.com. He's won the Web.com tour. He worked his way onto um, onto the PGA and did a fantastic job there. And up to this point, I think he's got uh, yeah he's got two wins, two wins on the no oh, excuse me one win. He's got one win on the year. That's it. But he's played really well. He's been in, in in every major, at least in the top ten. I think th- uh, three out of the four, and then top twenty five in the other one. So he, I'm not worried about him. He'll be back. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama has been dominant this year. He has no major wins, but he's been in them all, and he's got a total of uh, two wins on the tour this season. But I think for a Japanese player to see that out of him. Uh, it's i mean that's big for for japan and and the sport of golf just to keep the global aspect of the sport going and then uh the fedex cup standings we've got uh i think we're down to the last six overall or five overall tournaments left no majors left but there's still some fedex points to ca- uh, capture uh hideki is up, up at the top at first place justin thomas got moved into second with this uh this week or this win this past weekend and that was his third win on the tour this year, which ties him with uh, ties him in first for most wins with Jordan Spieth, who's in third, um, and Dustin Johnson, who's in fourth. And then you got Fowler at uh, one at, or with one win at fifth, and then Kisner is back in ninth uh, with one win as well. But again, the the rise of Kisner, the rise of Matsuyama, I think you're seeing. I, I think you're seeing a more diverse. You know, spread across the board as far as style of plays, uh, talent level, you know, different strengths, and I think that as we're not seeing the dominant era that we saw with Tiger Woods's era, but I think the overall general different skill levels that that are arising from certain players, and it's making the it's making the field more fun to watch. You, you don't you're not watching Tiger you're not watching golf to watch Tiger lose. You're watching golf to see who's going to win. And I, for me personally. I, I kind of like that a little bit better. I think it makes it more for an entertainment. I, I think you see more of the car wreck effect where you see more bad play come out of it in, in, in times, and you kind of like watching the car wreck, and you can't just you can't look away. Speaking of golf in general, Tiger Woods is back in the headlines. This, uh, this past weekend came out uh, his toxicology report from when he got pulled over and got a D, uh, DU, DW, no, DUI, DUI, and... Um, Man, this guy needs some help. Um, I, I don't think the mass majority of the public and even the sports media knew how bad Tiger Woods was as far as his dependency upon uh, painkillers and and various in various forms and stuff like that. Um, it came out that in his system at the time of the accident or at the time of the arrest, he had Vicodin. And I'm going to butcher this one. Duliod, du, uh, di, di, diluted, I think is what it's uh, diluted. That's what it is. Uh, Vicodin, diluted, Xanax, Ambien, and THC. Now THC is getting the big play here, and everybody's like, "Oh, he had marijuana in his." Uh, first of all, it was it was a, a confined and uh, prescription base medicine, so it wasn't like he was smoking marijuana, and that's not the big issue here on this one out of everything that i just read off of that list between uh vicodin diluted xanax and ambien thc is the the smallest monster on that list i know I, i've heard of ambien i've heard of xanax I, i've heard of vicodin i knew what all those were and i knew what thc was the diluted was the one that i didn't recognize and our station manager isn't here today and i was kind of hoping to uh talk to him or you know have him chime in on this his uh, his girlfriend and um, she she's a nurse, and she does hospice care, if I'm not mistaken. And when we were discussing this yesterday, I asked, 
and she happened to be in the studio, I asked, what is diluted? And um, she said that she couldn't believe he was on that. And that's what she gives patients on hospice that are near death to help make their transition easier. Oh, wow. And <laughs> she said to be taking that as, as basically a recreational drug is suicidal. Uh, to a certain point it, it's almost uh, it's almost like um what would what did prince die of uh t t tetranol or t something like that it, it was another one it was another one similar strength level oh, wow. uh to, dilu to diluted and and so she she was shocked to hear that he was taking that in a recreational form uh and, and i know he's fighting pain issues and i know he's had tons of surgeries and you hear about this a lot especially from athletes they 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 do they go through this grueling schedule and yet you know on the when they come out of it it's it's kind of a nightmare situation because they end up being hooked on these painkillers because they're taking so many of them for such a long period of time and they just the number of back surgeries he's gone through i think it's up to five or six now i mean that's killer i mean he's been on right. pain medicines essentially for the last four years straight and so to see him struggle like this, it, it, it's hard to see the mighty fall. And unfortunately, I think we're seeing the mighty fall. Uh, and I thought, I think a lot of people thought they saw him fall when his wife put right. a seven iron through the, <laughs> the driver's side window. Uh, no, I, I think we're seeing the pure rock bottom of, of Tiger Woods here in this one. So um, continuing on, U.S. makes a bid for the 2026 uh, FIFA World Cup uh, this past weekend. And they did it in joint in combination with Mexico and Canada, so it's really sort of a North American um, World Cup bid. Um, Donald Trump has come out and said that he's in support with this. He's glad that Mexico is a part of this, and he thinks it could, you know, help relations between the three countries. And um, the president of uh, American soccer, I forget his name now. He the reason why he said the reason why they did the joint bid was in order to strengthen. Uh, the chances of them winning the bid. Now, the interesting thing about this one is is that uh, Europe and Asia are not allowed to win said bid. And um, that means, and, and South America has already withdrawn and they said, we're not going to bid. Uh, Brazil is still trying to recover from the Olympics and, you know, the struggles they had there. So basically it's down to us, Africa and Australia. Australia has showed no uh, no interest, and Africa has not come out and said whether or not any of their countries are going to actually make a bid. So we could have a FIFA World Cup here in 2026, which is nine years away, and so it's kind of irrelevant right now. <laughs> but, you know, hey, why not? We haven't won an Olympics in that long. Right. So, um, and uh, going on to some football talk, um, Buffalo Bills trade away Sammy Watkins and a six-round pick in next year's draft to the L.A. Rams in exchange for E.J. Gaines and a second-round pick in next year's draft. A terrible trade as far as that goes, but I think uh, Buffalo has just go ahead, gone ahead and said, we're going to throw away this year with the Jets. The, the, those two teams are tanking, essentially, and they're going to start the rebuild process uh, throughout the year and basically signing over the division once again to the Patriots, so that's nice to hear. And then uh, finally, oh, well, and they also picked up Jordan Matthews from the Eagles in exchange for Ronald Darby. That's an improvement um, as far as the Darby situation goes, but you, you're still losing Sammy Watkins. And although Sammy has had a lot of, you know, health issues, I'm not really it, – it's a bad situation overall. I think Buffalo knows it's a bad situation overall, and I think they're just going to take the most they, – they make the most eliminated with, you know, the – the rotten lemons that they've got left. So, and finally, uh, David Sampson, uh, the Miami Marlins president announced on Saturday that on Friday, he signed and submitted the forms to the MLB commissioner's office to sell the team to the Bruce Sherman and Derek Jeter group. Uh, the sell is reportedly to be, uh, to be at $1.2 billion, which is uh, just mind blowing in general that, the Marlins that have been such a wreck over the past couple of years. Although John Carlo Stanton has been a diamond in the rough and, and reportedly they're trying to trade him, which is quite shocking. But um, 
the Derek Jeter uh, aspect in this group is more of um, player relations sort of a role, I, I'm, I'm imagining, just due to the fact that he's only putting in, he's only fronting $25 million. It's a lot of money still to front, but Derek Jeter isn't rich, rich, like uh, Sam, like Samson, or uh, well, Sherman is, and uh, and so that it's not he's not going to be a majority uh, owner at all, but I think he's going to be there for player relations. So uh, on the Stanton note, though, I do want to mention he homered for his uh, sixth straight game last night, eleventh uh, in his last twelve, eighteenth since the All Star break, and twenty third in the past 35 games to reach the total of 44. The big number he's going to try to reach is 60. And big numbers trying to reach. Dodgers trying to reach 116. Um, They're not going to make it. Stanton's not going to make it. These numbers are nearly impossible nowadays with just the amount of talent that your non-stars have. Your average pitcher still can strike out Giancarlo Stanton, let alone your aces. You know, so your 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 teams aren't going to ever hit that 116 marker. I doubt that the Dodgers break 110. So I think right now they're on track for 111. I don't think they're going to break 110. They'll break 100 for sure, but they're going to stop there in the early early going. So all right. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit of NBA. Um, and, you know, they released the uh, NBA schedule from this, this past weekend. So for this upcoming year, I'm going to give you a, a quick little list and breakdown of what I think are the games to watch from opening weekend and so on throughout the uh, rest of the year. So you are listening to Jake from Sports Talk. Don't forget to follow the show, like it, bing it, do whatever you can on all the social media websites at Jake from Sports Talk. Follow it so you will never miss a show. Even if you miss it live, you can catch the replay of it on Google Play or iTunes. Or you can watch our, you know, you can see my beautiful face on YouTube. So, all right, guys, we'll be right back. Our talk shows and music shows are looking for sponsors. Want to expand your brand awareness? Reach the hyper-local audience in Montgomery County? Lone Star Community Radio sponsorships accomplish this. Want to see our stats and rates? Check out IRLoneStar.com slash sponsor for more information. Or call in and leave us a message at 936-647-3776. So Austin is not the most well-versed when it comes to the sports world, but I love having him as an engineer because he's always a fun talk. And his his um, area of expertise would be in the entertainment industry, the Hollywood industry. So, Austin, do you have a uh, a fun entertainment fact for us today? A fun one? Well, well, well or well, what's juicy? What's hot in Hollywood right now? Like, what what's happened? Did J Lo, you know, slap a Rod or something? <laughs> I have to bring it back to sports because I know nothing about Hollywood. So, I I don't know about the gossip side of Hollywood. I could tell you if a trailer dropped. Okay, what trailer dropped? Any good trailers oh, recently? No, I do have an interesting story oh, that it. I saw the other day. So one of the stunt women on Deadpool two, uh, she she had an accident on set, and so production has been suspended indefinitely. 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 I didn't even know it was in action. I didn't know they were making a Deadpool two. That's oh, how yeah. out of the loop I am. I love movies, and I and I really enjoyed the first Deadpool. Um, what happened to her? Do we know? I didn't. You know, I didn't click on it because I didn't want to know more. You know, more than I needed to. Yeah. And, um, the headline was sufficient. Yeah. And it was just unfortunate. Was... So when was the original release date? And have they announced when how far it's going to be pushed back? Oh, it was like sometime in 2019. And since it's indefinite, who knows? Not given a release. Yeah, who knows? I wonder what happened. That's some, that could be clickbait, though. Because that's the problem with Hollywood news. Like, clickbait is, right. runs rampant in that stuff. So, anyways, this isn't the entertainment show. This is the <laughs> sports talk show. But... I like getting my uh, my engineer involved, and I'm so sad to say that you know next Wednesday he'll be back at school full time, and so you know we're gonna try to get him up here as much as we can. I, uh, we like having him down here; he helps out a whole lot. But um, yeah, un- unfortunately, he'll be back at school quite a bit now, so that's 
It's sad. We're losing our Very Austin. unfortunate. This will be your last uh, sports talk show with uh, with Austin as the engineer. But he'll be here, I know, tomorrow. And then right. uh, hopefully Monday and or Tuesday we'll have him up here. And we'll do a little going away party maybe. <laughs> Something like that on the, the Cindy Cochran Show. So if you do listen to this station a lot, you know uh, the name Cindy Cochran. She has a show every Monday uh, through Wednesday live. In studio from 10 to 11 here on Lone Star Community Radio. It's the Cindy Cochran Show. And unfortunately, she's been out uh, lately, but she will be back on Monday. So uh, live and kooky and crazy as ever. I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited, too. I miss that woman. So, But anyways, back to the NBA talk. I'm going on rants. I'm getting off of here. Uh, so the NBA, like I said, uh, released out their full, complete schedule for the 2018-2019. Or, yeah, 2017-2018. I forget how they, they list it now. But uh, they released they released next year's uh, season schedule officially out now, and um, just some games to really highlight and key in on here um, from the opening night and the opening first opening days essentially. So opening night is October seventeenth, two days after my birthday. So yay, that'll be nice. Nice to have a, a new season starting up of something. Um, Celtics and Cavaliers play that opening night. Uh, I think this is going to be a really interesting game to see where the Cavaliers are at in a team chemistry aspect to see how um, Hayward looks in uh, a Celtics uniform to see how all that plays out. And, and, um, and just to see that, the, I mean, these two are going to go at it and compete essentially for the first place seed again in the East and, and the playoffs as well, barring any unforeseen, you know, terrible injuries on either team. Also going on that that night, uh, the uh, hometown Houston Rockets here in Conroe are taking on the Warriors. So to see the Warriors back at it, um, to see the new uh, look rental Rockets essentially um, with the the one year rental because I don't uh, they're going to have to do a lot this year to get Chris Paul to resign. I think and 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 unless they're going to bring in LeBron James, I don't see him sticking around. So they're basically the rental Rockets for the year. Uh, so we got them at the Warriors that night. So that'll be good. You'll see the the two teams that you're going to see in the NBA Finals play on opening night. So they'll be there the the first night of the NBA and the last night of the NBA. Uh, so that that'll be entertaining. Uh, two nights later, October nineteenth, you've got Clippers at the Lakers. Um, seeing the new versions of both of these teams, the the uh, Lavar Ball situation going on there in LA and the youth that's in LA um, to see the kind of dismembered or dismembered uh, Clippers and to see who's going to hold the new, you know, championship title of LA basketball this year and who's going to own that, that, uh, that arena there in, in LA. So that's going to be a lot of, um, and, and I think, I think you're going to see a switch this year. I think you're going to see the Lakers uh, take over the dominance in that series. It won't, it won't be, uh, it won't be a huge dominance. It's not going to be a, you know, a blowout in the total season wins, but I think you're going to see L.A. take the edge this year, and then I think it's going to continue to fall in that order for the years to come. So, um, And then the Christmas Day games, uh, the Christmas Day extravaganza that the NBA puts on every year. Uh, Cavs go two Warriors. That's the first time they play in the season. Uh I, I again, I, it, it's just exciting to see them back at it. We'll see where everybody's at. We'll see. Uh, it, it'll get more compelling, I think, as the season goes on because I think you're going to see some real chemistry issues between Kyrie and LeBron and Love. I think you're going to see the the menage a trois uh, split up, sort of, in a way. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. And then um, the new heated recent rivalry that's going on on – uh, in the NBA is the Celtics and the Wizards. These two teams really don't like each other at all. They're playing on Christmas Day, so that'll be entertaining. Entertaining, and then the one year, uh, or the the battle of the one year rental teams, the Rockets and the Thunder's uh, face off on Christmas Day as well. Um, I mean, it's just an entertaining matchup and everything. Uh, again, I'm gonna go back to this and the fact that the Rockets and the Thunder are a more compelling matchup than the Rockets and the Mavericks. Dallas, I understand Mavericks aren't that good, or even the Rockets and the Spurs. And the Spurs are really good, and the Rockets are really good, and I think that's a better matchup, a better marquee matchup than 
than Thunder Rockets. But yet, Texas as a state has not done a very good job in persuading these leagues to create this, you know, pure hatred rivalry between their cities. Dallas has every major sports team that you can have as far as ones that count. Houston is only missing hockey, but you got soccer that butt heads and they they battle and the league does it right. They they make it a a compelling matchup. Uh, the Rangers and the Astros do it in baseball and they make it a, a compelling matchup and they, you know, battle for the boot. Football needs to get on board with this. Texans and Cowboys need to play every year. And then the Rockets and the Mavericks or the Rockets and the Spurs need to have more. Now, the Rockets and the Spurs already have a ton of marquee matchups because they play multiple times throughout the year. But the Mavericks and 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 either the Spurs or the Rockets need to do a better job of creating more hatred and animosity towards one another because it creates a compelling story and it makes things interesting. And uh, I, I hate that that we have such a good opportunity here. Baseball does such a good job with it because you've got the uh, Orioles and the Nationals that when they play, it's always a fun series and they're like a matter of 60 miles, not even that, I think, uh, apart from one another. Right. Uh, Yankees, Mets, both in New York. The NFL lacks there. They've got Jets and Giants right there. And yes, the Jets are terrible <laughs> and awful and a disgrace of a football team and could potentially go 0 and 16 this year. In all fairness, so are the Mets. Well, yeah, so are the Mets. There we go. Uh, that that as well. Not as bad as the Jets, but <laughs> but yes, the Mets are are yeah, god awful as well. But I, I I wish I wish that Texas did a better job of creating a rivalry sort of situation. It's good for the citizens. It's good for the economy. I, I the the forty five strip there, where you know, as a state, I know if you don't live here in, in <laughs> Texas, you probably don't care. They're widening 45 all the way up to Dallas to a minimum of three lanes, and a lot of the spots it's going to be four lanes or wider, which is awesome. Um, so I think they need to do a better job of that as a league. So C- Commissioner Goodell, get on it. I'm, I'm tired of not having the Cowboys-Texans clash every year. So, all right, we're going to go to our uh, bottom of the hour break. Uh, when we come back, speaking of the NFL and Mr. Goodell, he doled out. And ex, um, suspension to Mr. Ezekiel Elliott. And we're going to talk about why I disagree with said suspension. So stay tuned. You are listening to Jake from Sports Talk here on Lone Star Community Radio, 104.5, 106.1, and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. We'll be right back. A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. To keep plugging the, uh, the the station here and how much I really appreciate everything that uh, Mr. Richard Schisler, as everybody uh, calls him those, Dick, uh, everything that he's done here for the studio, I'm, I'm plugging away today. So uh, always tune in to Lone Star Community Radio 104.5, 106.1, and worldwide on IR at LoneStar.com. If you ever get a chance to go look up that podcast of that Nerd Thug, have you listened to Nerd Thug Radio yet? Oh, I have. Oh, I. It was like the first thing I listened to here. I love that show. Uh, they do a fantastic job of creating a quirky and goofy and fun atmosphere, and uh, it's a good listen. It's uh, two hours long, um, but it's it's a really entertaining listen that I, I I mean I don't get bored when I listen to them. So if you ever get go take a chance after you listen to this live episode, uh, we're gonna have music from uh, basically the rest of the day. I'm the last <laughs> talk show on Wednesdays. So um, if you get a chance after my show, go listen to Nerd Thug Radio. You can find them on Lone Star Community Radio, but I believe also 
Uh, they have nerdthugradio.com, and uh, I think their Facebook is just Nerd Thug Radio. So go take a chance. If you get a chance, go take a, a listen over to them. They're uh, a really good radio show here, here at Lone Star Community Radio. So, all right, before the break, I mentioned that I teased, I teased, that's the radio term, I teased, uh, that the NFL has laid down the law with a six-game suspension on the Dallas Cowboys running back Ezekiel Elliott coming from Mr. Roger Goodell who is judge, jury, and executioner in the sense of law and order in the league. And um, the uh, Ezekiel has filed his appeal, and we everybody knew he was going to. It wasn't a shocker there. He had until yesterday to get it filed. He had it filed on uh, Monday, actually. And um, that the... The issue here I have with this is that um, in, in the law, in the, in the eyes of the law, from the uh, state attorney of Ohio or whatever it was, uh, brought no, said there was no criminal charges that they were going to file or pursue against Ezekiel Elliott due to, uh, and this is quoting here, uh, conflicting and inconsistent information. Coming from witnesses, the uh, girl or the woman, the young woman that uh, was the victim in the situation, um, and the in addition to the the legal system not pursuing any charges, the NFL has refused to release uh, their findings and everything that they found. The report that they uh, basically typed up and sent. To Ezekiel. Now they, they sent a letter to him and informed him of their decision and um, kind of the base general idea of what their findings were and why they and, and how they came to this six game conclusion. But uh, they aren't actually releasing any of the interviews that they conducted with any of um, the, the victim, the victim's family. Uh, the uh, mutual friends between the two uh, people she works with, people he works with. They uh, they had a special doctor come in and look at all the evidence as far as the physical evidence on her, her bruises or cuts and everything like that. Uh, I don't think she had any cuts, actually. I think it was just bruises. But um, And they interviewed and did all this stuff, but now they're not actually going to release anything here. And uh, this has been kind of beaten into the ground over the last week. Uh, or essentially since last Friday when this story broke and this sp- suspension actually came out. Um, I, I don't, the, the, I don't, it's not that I, I can, A, I don't condone domestic violence. I don't want another Colin Kaepernick, you know, oh, you're supporting domestic violence. No, I'm not supporting domestic violence, obviously. I don't support domestic violence. I'm not condoning any sort of domestic violence. My problem is, is that Roger Goodell has too much power here in this situation, and he doesn't consistently use it. You look at Greg Hardy situation from uh, two years ago. There was clear and obvious evidence against him. The courts were pursuing a case against him until the girl essentially up and vanished and withdrew her. uh, She didn't vanish as she like actually vanished. She didn't die or anything like that. Her family knew where she was, but she she asked to be left alone. Uh, but she withdrew uh, the all charges on him, um, and he walked away with four games. He threw her on a pile of guns on a futon, and there's video evidence of him actually hitting her, and yet he only got four games. Ezekiel Elliott here gets six games, and is there's just no and he's not getting pursued. And any criminal charges. And the NFL has been at this this uh, investigation since July of 2016. So over a year now, uh, 13 months about, uh, 13 or 14 months about now, that they've been pursuing this, this investigation. And yet the legal system went in and said, look, we, we needed, I think they came back within two or three months and they said, no, there's inconsistent stories. We've talked to everybody and... Uh, it, it, we can't find anything that's actually uh, tangible, I guess, in this situation that we can use to actually bring charges against him. 
and and it, it was and so I, my my question is how can the NFL how can Roger Goodell go on a you know four times five times long longer investigation and come up with a six game suspension when the legal system can't and I just don't like the fact that um, he has all that power to discipline the players. I don't know if Ezekiel is guilty, and I think this is more of a situation where Roger Goodell is probably saying, hey, look, you put yourself in this sort of a situation. You put yourself in harm's way as far as harming another individual and having a case brought against you. Therefore, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time, so we're going to punish you for it. That's that's my problem. And, and And he doesn't have to justify it with anybody. He can he can do whatever he wants, and I, I know he's in a tough tough position here because if if they had come out with with you know two games like they did with Ray Rice, he would have had women and and fans and up in arms. You would have had you know sports talk you know idiots like me up here still up in arms. And it, yes, it's something to talk about for us. And yes, we probably wouldn't have liked two games either. And no, we don't like the six games either because we think that's too much or we, we don't think it's justify, justified. And it's not that we want to meet in the middle or we want to give them four games. No, it, it has nothing to do with the actual amount of games. It has to do entirely with the consistency of your actions. You put into place, since the Ray Rice incident, a mandatory minimum of six games for domestic violence issues. Not lawsuits, not you know, criminal action, but issues, just in general, generalized issues. And that's that's great. But since that's been implemented, you have not consistently used that six-game rule. We saw Greg Hardy break that rule. We've seen others break that rule. Um, Adrian Peterson, now playing for the Saints, had an issue of domestic violence with his son, where he you know, essentially beat his son with a switch and left noticeable marks on the child. And yet, and he got, you know, suspended for a whole year. In addition to some other, you know, shady actions on the side. But Ezekiel Elliott also has some shady actions on the side. So that's my point, is there's no consistency with Roger Goodell. And therefore, I don't think he should have the power and the control in that situation. And I think the Players Association, uh, in the next agreement, which I think is going to come up within three years, I believe, they need to go in and they need to say, hey, look, you cannot have this power anymore. You have shown reckless use of it. And having all, all I want as a fan is to know that you're going to do something that's strong enough to hopefully prevent any more action like this taking place and you're going to be consistent about it. So that way, if you flick a woman, you get 10 games. Or if you murder a woman, you get 10 games. I, I, I want a consistency, and I know that's a big, drastic statement, and, and, and it, it sounds really harsh, and I understand it. I, I, and I'm not, again, not condoning any of this. I just want my NFL to be, to be reliable. And the problem is, is that I don't see Roger Goodell as a reliable leader of what he calls the shield. And I think the shield is essentially tarnished because of it. And I, and, and I know they get special passes in so many walks of life. And again, I, I, I'm not opposed to the fact that it was six games because I think he deserved less. And in all honesty, I don't know the full truth of the, the, of the facts and, and what they found in their findings. And I think if they really have something to justify the six games, they need to just come out and, and present it. So that way, a lot of this will go, a lot of the heat under Roger Goodell will go away. But uh, the my biggest concern is the uh, drunk with power attitude the uh, that he takes, you know, when running his league. So that that's my biggest issue. That's my biggest concern. And, um, you know, I, I really, uh, in the appeal process, it really depends on what, what their findings are you know, what they found in their findings. If if it's really justifiable to have the six games, the six games will hold. If it's not, then they'll reduce it down to four, but I don't see it going any lower than four. And what this does for the Cowboys is it presents uh, a very 
challenging obstacle or hurdle to jump over. But that's all it is. It's not a mountain. It's, you know, it's a, it's a molehill. They'll be okay. They'll survive. They'll get through the four games. I heard a couple people say, oh, is this going to take them out of playoff contention? Don't be ridiculous. They're still a good team. Their defense has improved. Their offensive line has has gotten worse in the offseason. But it doesn't mean they're still a really good offensive line. They're still probably the first or second best offensive line in the league. I think they'll be okay. I think Dak Prescott will be able to handle himself enough to where if it's a four-game suspension, they probably go two and two. If it's a six-game suspension, they probably go three and three. Either way, I believe they're going to walk out 500 at 500 after the suspension is over, and I think they'll be fine for the remainder of the season. So, all right, we got one more segment to go. Unfortunately, guys, you are listening to Jake from Sports Talk. Don't forget to like the show. Follow it on uh, Facebook, iTunes, uh, Google Play, YouTube, all those things, wonderful things, at Jake from Sports Talk. Like it, bing it, follow it. Don't ever miss a show. And, uh, yeah, so we'll be right back. Talk. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. All right, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Jake from Sports Talk here on Lone Star Community Radio. I am your host, Mr. Jake LeFleur. Glad to have you guys back in for the last segment. Unfortunately, we have to rush on out of here, too. We've got nine minutes in this last segment, so we're going to kind of just dive right into this. Uh, We're going to keep the football talk going. So you've had a couple of uh, high people over in Conroe Coffee. Hi. We've had a couple people, uh, a couple NFL players come out and... Um, I think this is the first time we've actually heard them oppose, you know, openly oppose Colin Kaepernick. And it's not so much they're opposing his message. It's uh, they're they're opposing the fact that he hasn't spoken up at all. And I know why he hasn't spoken up, because his manager, his agent is telling him not to because he does. He wants his, his player to get paid. Therefore, he gets paid. And so if Colin speaks out, then he's not going to get a job. Supposedly, it didn't work out like that, but. You know, I think now is kind of the time that Colin has the ability. We've hit a point where if it's going to take a big injury for him to get signed, and uh, and I, I hopefully that doesn't happen as far as the injuries go because I would hate to see any player go down. Um, but it, it it's okay, I think, now for him to stand up and say something. And um, especially after the the events that happened this last weekend, you saw a lot of players. Um, stand up and, or I shouldn't say stand up, sit down in response to uh, the Charlottesville uh, events that took place this past weekend and everything that's going on around that. I'm not going to get into the the political side of it necessarily. I don't want to dive into um, any of that area. My my expertise lies within sports, not politics. Um, But the interesting factor that that I saw come from it was the – Michael Bennett is the uh, is a player for is a defensive end for the Seattle Seahawks, and him and his brother have been outspoken about a lot of uh, political issues. They're they're not afraid to say what's on their mind, and they're really entertaining. I don't often agree with some of the stuff that they say, but they're very entertaining and and they're very um, literate. I guess I would they're, they're they can get across their message and and then in a good way and an appropriate way to the point where I think they make themselves more uh, likely to be heard. Let's put it that way. And, you know, shout out to them. They are from, uh, they are from Houston. So, you know, ooh, I think they went to Lamar high school. So, um, but here is a little video uh, interview from sports illustrated now of Michael Bennett from this uh, past weekend after the Seattle game where he did take a seat during the national anthem. Steve for taking a seat. Um, I think last week I was just 
with everything that's been going on the last couple of months, and especially after the last couple of days, seeing everything in uh, Virginia, seeing what's going on out there, and earlier today in Seattle, um, I just wanted to be able to use my platform to be able to continue to speak on and address it. Do you think you're going to face any backlash? Of course I'm going to of course I'm going to face backlash. This is bigger than me. This is bigger than football. This is bigger than anything that we have any different. This is about people. This is about bringing opportunities to people, giving people equality. This is bigger than a sport. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't really take your accolades with you, but what you can do is leave a legacy that you can continuously give kids the seeds to be able to inspire. I mean, I don't look at myself as a role model. I look at myself as trying to inspire young, young children, young people of color, young people of different gender, or young people of different sex, whatever they are, to want to change their environment and continuously push whatever they think is right. Now, I, I, I agree entirely with that message, and I agree with, with his intent and everything along those lines. I, I don't want to um, take away from that, uh, not not at all. But um, I guess my 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 concern here is in the fashion and the way that you do it, and and the reason why I bring that up is because I'm okay if you decide to choose, you know, if you decide to take a knee or sit during the national anthem. That that is your form of uh, freedom of speech. Your 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 God-given right as a you know citizen of the United States of America. I'm all for that. I'm not going to oppose the fact that he took a seat during the national anthem. Um, where I am going to oppose is the general reaction in which it causes. And I wish that more individuals would take a peaceful stance, white, black, Asian, American of all races, it doesn't matter, a peaceful stance and a peaceful approach to being able to just, you know, sit down and have a conversation, all right? And if if taking a knee or sitting during the national anthem is how that, how you, how you think that'll best allow or best bring about a conversation, then great, then, then that's fine. But when you see violent action uh, and, and, what we saw this past weekend was terrible, but but when you see violent action like that, do you really do you really believe that that's going to be a, a viable solution to the problem? Do you think that's going to help the the issues that we're facing? No, it's not. And and I hate to get all you know sentimental and and you know preachy up here, and and I don't want to abuse my platform. I simply just want to say that you know, look, it's. It's not okay with what occurred this past weekend, and I think we need to be more willing and able to listen. Both sides, all sides, it doesn't matter whether you're you're on the right, you're on the left, you're caught in the middle, extreme right, extreme left. I think we have to be more willing to hear rather than, or sorry, more willing to listen rather than to just hear the other people. You hear them, yeah, you, you're physically hearing the words, but you're not listening to what the words are, are saying. So I, I think we need to be more willing and open to to just being open to conversation talks and everything along those lines. So um, with that said, I hate to bring it down on a, on a kind of a serious note because I do like to be fun and... Uh, and <laughs> kind of goofy up here. So we're going to end it with this. The NFL has the new policy of open celebration in the end zone after touchdowns. And I think that you're going to see some rather creative and fun and entertaining ce- uh, touchdown celebration dances this year. Do you know uh, that Kean Peel skit with McCringleberry? Yes, McCringleberry. Yeah. Yes. The three thrusts. The three thrusts. <laughs> If you ever get a chance to go look up that uh, the just go look up uh, Key and Peele, oh, what's what's the excessive celebration? Excessive celebration. Go 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 look up the. That's basically what you're gonna see this year, and I'm super excited for it, and I cannot wait to um, see how creative these players. They've been suppressed so much over the years, and I can't wait to see how creative they get with it. So I'm, I'm really excited. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in every Wednesday. I'm here 1 to 2 
I hope to hear you or see you. No, no, no. Uh, well, I'm not going to hear you or see you next week. I hope you chime back in next week. Don't forget to like all the social media at Jake from Sports Talk. You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio 104.5, 106.1, and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Great to have you guys back in. We'll see you next Wednesday. Woo! Thanks for checking out this podcast of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. If you enjoyed this recording, make sure to check out our past shows online at IRLoneStar.com or their respective video or podcast formats on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the show, either it being about sponsorships or questions for the host, contact the station manager at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or call the station at 936 647 3776. This show was recorded in downtown Conroe, Texas at the Lone Star Community Radio Studio. And Lone Star Community Radio reserves all rights to this recording and images.